Well, hello and welcome back. We are continuing looking at SQL, uh, particularly MySQL and MariaDB and doing some, uh, you know, basically some tutorials as we're working our way through this. Uh, this episode, we are going to look at some of the date related types, uh, data types. And so in order to do this, let's go ahead and start by creating a table. And with this table, probably easier to do it this way. I create this table. Uh, oops. And I should probably get rid of that comma. There we go. And let's look at that. I'm going to create a table called all dates. And I've got four types here. I don't have a primary key or an ID or anything like that. This is just for messing around. And you'll see here, I have a date a date time, a time stamp, and a year. Now, the interesting thing about, and each these are the four date types in SQL. The interesting thing you probably see right away is that I've got a default current time stamp and on update current time stamp for this type time stamp. And it can't be null. So that, while a, uh, well, I'll take a look. I'll show you what that data looks like in just a second. So let's start with that. So let's go ahead and just insert a record where we're just going to use now, which is basically a way to say what is the time. So if I do, uh, let's just do this. If I do select now from all dates, then it's just going to show me, oh, it's not going to show me that, darn it. Oh, because I don't have that. So let's do that for my addresses. There we go. So it's just going to do now, which is this is the date and time according to the system that we're on, to that server date and time. So now if I go in here, and I'm just going to start a record that's now um, for each of those types. And we're going to see here that it's not too happy about it. Oh, because... Uh, I didn't do that right. Let's do this. Uh, until all date. And this is going to be uh, type date. Whoops. Ah. I hate it when I struggle to type. Okay, so type date. Type date time, type timestamp, and type year. Okay, so now we're going to take that. Let's just copy and paste that over here. And now type year tells me it's an, in, it's an incorrect date time. So what I'd have to do here, because type year is just a year it's not a date time i can do this i can take just the year part of now and now it's going to work and we'll look at that in just a minute so now if i do select star from uh all dates so i can see that i have my type date my first one it's just a date it gives me a year and this is uh, set to your local um, standards and looks so it may look a little different on yours depending on what your uh, environmental stuff is but with the date note I have just the date it's a month 04 day 20 and then the year and it's actually it's why 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 you know it's this format four digit year two digit month two digit day for a date time I get the date a space and then I get the 24 hour time. So this is, this says it's one in the afternoon, 1 PM, 24 minutes after 44 seconds after timestamp is going to display in this case as a date time as well. Sometimes with the timestamp, you will see an integer value and that is, it depends on what it is. It's basically, it's a system time and it is a way that this database can store a time as a big integer as opposed to this uh, this date format. And of course with the year, we see that the type year is 
2022. Now with this one, uh, let's see if I do select, uh, let me do now from all dates. Let's play around with that for a little bit. Now with that, there are some things I can do. So I can do year and it's going to give me the year. I can do, I believe I can do time. Let's try that. And it gives me just the time. And these are all ways to quickly pull, do some quick formatting. If I do date, it gives me just the date. I can do, uh, I think I can do month. Yep. So it gives me the month. And this is the, this is the uh, integer month. Month start, January is, is month one just to be sure, uh, up to December, which is month 12. I can do, uh, I can even do down, like I can do hour. And it's going to give me the 24, the military time hour. Now, if I do the same insert, and let's, uh, let's change this around. Let's do this. Let's take the same insert. But now, instead of using the now, I'm going to change this up. And I'm going to use So let's say let's say, say the year 2000. And the timestamp will be uh, 2000 0001 0000. So let's do that. And let's do the same thing. Whoops, overdid it. Let's do the same thing. So here, now note before when I did now, it made some adjustments. Let's see what it does if it makes those same adjustments when I do this as a string. Okay, I get the same thing. I do, or I get a no error. So if I do select star from all dates, now we see that I got the same thing. It, it went ahead and again on the type date, it just truncated off the time. So I'm still good there. But notice while that defaults uh, somewhere up here for timestamp is the current timestamp. I'm able to override it because that's, as we've seen before, that is the default. But if I take that same entry and now I get rid of the timestamp and we'll see where this becomes very useful here. Okay, so I'm gonna take that guy. And now I can see that he gives me a timestamp. He gives me when this was created. Now note it, note that uh, 1329. Now let me do this. Let me do the same thing. And let's do update all dates set year equal, uh, let's do 2020. Where year equals 2000. So let's take this and do an update. Oh, sorry, it's not year, it is type year. Helps remember the column name. Probably wouldn't like year anyways. There we go. Oh, okay, so now if we do select star from all dates. Now notice here that, um, so we just did an update on these two fields. Uh, it went from 2000 to 2020. And notice before our update, our timestamp was 2000, it was 2022 at 1329.21. Well now, that timestamp, because we didn't include it, it is an update timestamp. So we have uh, a last modified that we can easily do uh, within the table. Now there are some other things we can do with a timestamp. We could do it on created. We can set some information there. We can change around some of the defaults. 
uh, particularly because if you see here, the default is current timestamp. But we'll see here, it has this thing that we're going to talk about later called a trigger that says on update, current timestamp. So when I do an update, if I don't have this in there, it's going to give that current timestamp. Now you notice that the other dates stayed the same. That 2000, you know, 1 1 2000, that stuff all stayed the same, but the timestamp updated itself. And of course, the year did because I told it to. Now, while we are talking about this, I do want to briefly mention if I try to create a table, uh, let's call it all dates to. Let me use some reserve of words and let me show you what happens here. It could get very confusing to the database, but so if I create this one, I'm going to get errors because these are reserved words. Now what I can do is I can escape them. Essentially, I can do these tick marks. Just say, look, quote this thing out. And that means, though, that every time, oh, yeah, it's not going to like that at all. Oh, my mistake. Uh, let's do this. Okay, and let me get rid of that so I don't keep blowing that up on you guys. So let's do this here first. Whoops, got to get rid of the comma. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I do get to do it, uh, but I think I'm going to get uh, insert into, let's see if this works, because I'm using reserved words. So if I do date, comma, date, time, comma, timestamp, comma, year, values, now, whoop, whoop, come here, now, now, now. Make that a year. Let's see if it works. Oh, it does. So even though it could get pretty confusing when you start doing queries, you can use those words as uh, column names. Sometimes you'll run into issues with it, though. And in that case, you will want to use tick marks. Also, uh, you'll see this a lot if you are coming from a system where you have spaces in the name. So if this was like date, time, time stamp, year created, you know, something like that, you will sometimes see those, you'll have to use those tick marks in order to tell it that this is actually a string I want to use instead of a reserved word. Now, we can do, uh, let's go back to select star from all dates. dates there we go now let's do let's do a little arithmetic so i'm going to do select star from all dates where let's see type date less than 2022 and i'm going to get that i can see that i can use greater than and less than with my dates I can probably even do, I haven't tried this before, but we're going to try this anyways. I think I can do a like with this. So I can say where it's like 2000. And yep, sure enough, it's going to give me that. So, uh, and actually I think we have stumbled into that before, is it can treat it almost like a string when you use a like. So we can use our less than, we can use our greater than, things like that. We can even do an equal uh, or type date equals 2000 and I can even do not equal and that's gonna give me the 2022 date so I can go in and and do that fairly easily um, it's not gonna it's not rocket science it's not something that we're gonna sit there and go oh wow this is you know this is new and unusual because it's basically the same thing we've seen with a lot of other you know, with numbers and even strings things of that nature 
Now, the next thing we we want to play with briefly is date arithmetic, which is where we are going to add something. So if I want to do select, so when I do select now from uh, all dates, uh, let's do from all dates too. Now, that's going to show me this time. Now, if I do a plus one, um, I think I do it like that. Now I'm going to see it as a as this integer. What I really want to do is I want to do uh, select. Let's do this. So I can do select year of now plus one. And so now I'm getting that year. I can see that I've got from 2022 to 2023. If I do date, let's see what the date gives me. And now I see it's 421 instead if I did the four. Sorry, if I did that, that would be the 2022. But note that when I go with the, the plus, it's actually converting it into this integer thing. And actually, let's do it this way. Let's do uh, now plus one comma now. So you can see the two. It may be easier to see. So we see here this is at 1338.21. And we can see it adds to the last part here. So I can go, um, I can add a, you know, I can add a minute. I could, or I'm sorry, that's a second in that case because it's adding to that. But I could also do, uh, let's see. Well, yeah, so let's start with that. Noting that it gives me this slightly different format when I do it, when I'm coming out of it. Uh, but I can do an update. Let's see. Uh, if I do update, well, let's do this so we can see it. All dates. And then if I do update all dates set, uh, let's say type date, I'll type, whoops, type date plus one. Oops, well, let's do it on the dates. So let's do that one. And now do it. We can see that here instead of, oh, let's take this over here. That's probably easier to read here, sorry. Oh, if we look here, we can see that it went from 420 and 11 to 421. And so it's on the type date time, we get the last at the, the uh, what is that, hours, minute, second. On a date, we get it at the day. And so it's just taking, it's adding one to that last number. In this case, we're doing add one. Now we can do more complicated data arithmetic and that's like our, our very basics. If we want to get a little more complicated, then there's some additional functions that we will come back and visit. Uh, like I said, there's a lot about dates that uh, is worth our review time. But I think that's it for today. That wraps up our time. So I'll let you get back to it. We'll come back and we're just going to keep digging our way through these things. Uh, as you've seen, we've talked about things like store procedures we've, or mentioned and triggers and some things like that that we will start getting into along the way. That being said, go out there and have yourself a great day, a great week, and we will talk to you next time.